Okay, fantastic. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this webinar. We're going to have some amazing discussions today about today's challenges in education and talking about immersive content, AR, VR, the metaverse, a whole bunch of things. Um, my name is Dr. Rena Walzinger. I'm the head of customer success, director of customer success here at Eon Reality, based in Southern California. And uh, very, very excited today uh, with our special guest, Professor Tiatu Lohi Matenahu. I just want you to, I know I probably mispronounced it. <laughs> so. That's good. That, that, no, that's fantastic. You know, you got it. Thank you. So, I apologize if I did that. Uh, and I'll just uh, give you a brief bio. Um, he was appointed in September 2021 as the Vice Chancellor of the Pacific Adventist University in Papua New Guinea. Prior to his appointment, he was for eight years the Chairman of the PNG Science and Technology Council and Chief Science Advisor to the government. He was therefore instrumental in setting up the PNG Science and Technology Council in the Secretariat Office of Science and Tech and coordinated policy discussions in the development of national science, technology, and innovation policies. His role as Chief Science Advisor was vital in informing government on the merit of science-based information and scientific data in policy decision-making. Dr. Montenaho has a PhD in pharmacy from the University of Queensland, Australia, and held positions as Professor of Basic Medical Science and Pharmacology at the School of Medicine and Health Sciences, and Dean of Research at the University of Papua New Guinea. He also has, has, has held adjunct appointments with the University of Utah in the US and James Cook University in Australia. His research interest has been in drug recovery in biodiversity and marine products and snake bite antivenom. So with that, welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome. And, uh, and uh, do you want to say a few words? Uh, Thank you, Rena. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really honored to be part of this conversation. And uh, there's a lot that uh, we can talk about. And, you know, I hope that it will be, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Thank you. Fantastic. So, um, so I have a bunch of questions and, and within these questions, we'll fold in, you know, particulars to all the experiences you have at your institution and, and we can discuss uh, things that will help our global audience uh, here today with immersive content. So let's just start talk about today's challenges in education, which you know there are a lot, especially in the last <laughs> few years. It's grown yes. tremendously. You've seen some administrator turnover. We've seen that globally as well, definitely here in the United States. So uh, can you just tell us a little bit about what are the key challenges that you see today in education and maybe the, bowl, or the role that virtual and augmented reality play to address some of these challenges? Thank you. I, I, I think uh, the last couple of years, uh, I think we, we have seen a tremendous, uh, you know, uh, transition in terms of uh, the refocusing of higher education, particularly universities throughout the world, uh, but in relation to to the, the, the use of technology, uh, and also rapidly the 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 acceleration of knowledge from research to inform the way in which knowledge uh, can actually be. A you know, so the, the universities are now in a transitional, in fact, in the acceleration kind of mode, so to speak, particularly in, in uh, you know, uh, you know, moving the pace of research, but also uh, the partnership with industry and government uh, has been quite current uh, in the last uh, couple of years. I think that the development of COVID vaccine really is a demonstration of that, uh, that, that new kind of emerging uh, interest and, and partnership alliances uh, between the universities, government, uh, the industry, private sector, and a lot of uh, you know stakeholders in in in, in uh, converging to try to address a, a common global uh, issue. So really, the the role of universities now, uh, you know, is becoming transformative in many ways. Uh, so I can say that the challenge really is to create a synergies partnership uh, with a lot of players now to making universities more, more meaningful in terms of uh, its role, uh, particularly, but also at the same time creating an ideal environment for, for students uh, to interact uh, in, in a place that uh, we can, and also uh, where, you know, online, uh, you know, a program becomes, uh, uh, you know, 
important in this particular time. So, you know, it is about, you know, the focus of the relevant kind of research and knowledge uh, and also uh, the, the ability to, to really engage with, uh, you know, key players to, to, trans, to translate knowledge and create those partnerships. But in the midst of it is the opportunity for students <laughs> to learn, uh, to understand uh, how society can really uh, be the motivation, the challenges of society can be the motivation for universities. But, and also at the same time, recognizing that the online, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, opportunities uh, is really also the, the additional uh, motivation for acceleration of uh, universities' discourse in delivering of, uh, uh, you know, education and creating an, an ideal environment for learning. That's an excellent answer. I know it's been challenging um, teaching online in many ways. For one thing, the first first thing that happened with me is I lost my labs. So <laughs> and I teach filmmaking and recording, so you can imagine uh, how difficult that was to figure out. In fact, the only time that happened to me in the past was when I lost a building due to some air conditioning thing. They closed the building and I'm like, oh, wow, we have to kind of sit in a circle and talk about how to make film without any equipment. So I started, mm -hmm. how do you do this? How do you how do you find yeah. another modality to do this? And you know what? Something emerged during that time. And this was before um, AR and VR, but people find, you know, people find ways. And I think that's why with this digital technology, AR and VR is kind of coming in. Absolutely. In the past, it was like, you know, grab things from mm -hmm. your parents, come in with with equipment. Let's make our own space. Let's, you know, make other labs. And so I and I kind of think mm -hmm. AR and VR is kind of an extension of what happened to me in my own mm -hmm. teaching at that mm -hmm. time. That makes sense. So with that, how do you think um, students are like different than when you went to school now? Like what, you know, what their needs are, what they expect from us? I, I think with uh, the rapid, you know, uh, change now occurring, particularly with with technology, you know, uh, today now as, you know, looking back in the last even, you know, five or 10 years ago uh, and going further, there is, uh, you know, Tremendous shift in in terms of uh, the 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 uh, access to to technology, uh, in smart uh, mobile system and so forth. Uh, the applications that allow for students to interact with one another, uh, and and to really kind of uh, exploit uh, the 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 fact that knowledge is expanding, but the technology is able to be efficiently used to to really kind of uh, get the knowledge, you know, the learning in such a way that it's uh, efficiently sort of uh, taken up and, and also allow for students to to merge, in, you know, to get them to uh, submerge or merge into to the realm of, uh, of learning. So I think that uh, it's, it's a lot more uh, efficient, but at the same time, it's the ability, capacity to kind of uh, use uh, tools in a smart way so that uh, you know, you also also recognize that you need to interact with other people too as well, uh, and and that is the challenge that we face. But you know, the online and augmented kind of a, you know reality and bring in, but allow for for co-creation if you like, allow for co you know learning together, and and so that is the, the really the the adventure. Uh, that is yet to kind of uh, emerge. So I think it's exciting, really, in today now is uh, the opportunity in which uh, we are now in. Uh, sure. thank you. Mm. Do you think that today's students are kind of more social, multitaskers, like they have shorter attention spans? And um, and with that, like how teaching, with teaching, you know, changing the way that we teach, like whether it's Zoom or whatever it needs to be, uh, really capture their attention. Like, what do you think about that? You know, I, there is a, you know, people come with different kinds of, uh, you know, expertise and experience and, and and perception in terms of how they exploit to improve their, you know, the capacity, ability for multitasking. It is there. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, it just depends on, you know, uh, how, you, where you have been exposed earlier on. Uh, you know, and I think the drive is there. 
The drive certainly is there for multitasking. Not everyone has that, but it is the the technology, if you like, and the, the resources that you have will allow you to kind of exploit, you know, a, a bit that, that and, and build the capacity, the ability that you have for multitasking. Certainly, you know, not everyone will have that, but I think that, uh, you know, the technology can be deployed to to kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, build that, that ability for multitasking. So, uh, you know, and that uh, I can't say that everyone come and have that. But I think it can be created, it can be expanded, and 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 so forth through the use of uh, uh, technology and online applications and and so forth. Certainly. Sure. You know, it's interesting. I, I was just thinking about that for myself because I am a multitasker. But when I'm doing mm -hmm. augmented reality on my phone. And I'm in and I'm in a one to one scale. So maybe I'm walking through a museum or I like sci fi and I teach film. So sometimes I'm walking through a sci fi set or something fun like that. I got to tell you, it's one of the few times that I can't I can't really multitask because I'm so busy with the phone and walking around and like going through the environment that literally it has to be immersive. And it's kind of an interesting thing yes. for me because it's the only time when I'm working that I don't answer emails, I don't answer the phone and being an extreme multitasker, I think that this, there's something to that, right? Being in an immersive environment, whether yes. it's on your phone or Oculus that where you can't, you know, if you're doing a screen recording and you're walking around, you can't do anything else because you're going to crash into something or, Absolutely. you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, think, yeah, I, I think that that kind of experience, immersive kind of, you know, experience, it's really important, and you you're quite right, you know. And and I think that uh, you know having the the exposure to three D kind of uh, you know learning it, it creates that awareness of the, you know the need for you to kind of uh, sense that you know you are in a, you know that environment so to speak. I mean it's it's like uh, you know walking through a forest, you know your eyes are open to you know everything that is around you. So, you know, I think that, that that is what it is, you know, and if you are you're diving, you know, you know, scuba diving, you know that you must be aware that there may be a shark around you. So you, you kind of have to create that ability to have, a, you know, different, you know, kind of, you know, uh, you know, lateral senses and, and, and whatnot because of the, not so much of, you know, danger, and, but just to, to experience that, have that experience. So I think coming into this realm of learning and, and 3D, you know, kind of learning, it, it, it is, it, it is that, uh, you know, that sense of, uh, of the ever presence, you know, being able to kind of see things around you and, and being able to, to notice, uh, you know, what you're learning and that is, that is holistic, that is exactly, that, that, that is enriching to you. Exactly. Hmm. I, I, you know, it's funny when I think about it, the more I think about, um, how this changed, and you know, students uh, after school are, you know, they're into gaming, they're into these other things, even if it's not gaming. I mean, use your your technology to do a lot of things, banking, you know, um, yes, communication. So, you know, it's things are changing quick. And with that, I wanted to recite a famous quote from John Dewey. It's one one of my um, champions, in fact, when I was doing my doctoral studies. Um, as John Dewey, if we teach today's students as we taught yesterday, as we rob them of tomorrow. And I think that's really pertinent here. And, you know, things are really changing for the way students or kids are born with phones. You know, by the time they're two or three, they grab my phone and they're already scrolling around. Yes, yes, and yes, I can yes. do it's kind of amazing to watch. But so do you think the methodology of learning and training must change to better address today's students' mindset? Then? Oh, absolutely. I, I think that we are, you know, evolving you know, rapidly in the sense that, you know, the legacy of the past is really critical, the foundation, what we, we have been and where we've come from, but, you know, moving forward uh, allows you to kind of see, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for which you want to really, you know, kind of uh, engage with. So, uh, because, you know, as it is, you know, depend on, on where you are and, and but where we are now in, in this space of time. The future has got, you know, so many opportunities. So you really want to kind of make sure you don't miss out, 
you know, and I think it's really where you kind of approach from where a point of reference where the future as it is uh, it need to be captured in, in as much as you in its totality, much as of the experience that you need to. So, you know, I think the position is we are young people now, every one of us looking ahead. Uh, this is this is it now. If you if you don't have that uh, the, the, the capacity, ability to see and, and then to grasp uh, everything that you can, then you don't want to, to, to be limited in your learning and in your trajectory in terms of moving forward. So I, I think it's crucial. Yeah. Absolutely. And one of the things, you know, uh, I get a lot of questions from people all over the world about, well, what about things like, like, why is this important if you're teaching something with numbers, like, maybe economics or finance or business or something like that, or, you know, how, but then I start, or, you know, one of the two of the big subjects right now and that I've uh, asked, been asked a lot about are artificial intelligence and blockchain. In fact, you know, a lot of people are like, we want to teach about that, but you know, um, there's something about today's, uh, today's technology is really visual. And yes, so yes. it's, I think it takes some lateral thinking exercise, right. To, think about, okay, this is how I'm teaching, but if I make things, but when you go to work, you're in a situation, you're in a visual environment with other other people, you're problem solving. So how do you add that visual thing? And maybe there are scenarios or maybe they're in in a certain environments or the stock market or, you know, something where um, I I kind of think that the way that students learn now uh, would benefit from that kind of visualization project solving um, and collaboration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do you think yeah, about yeah. that? You know, I think it's important. I think this is where I guess, uh, you know, from the in the neuroscience background, you know, sort of, you know, the it, it really enhances the neuroplasticity kind of component that, you know, we envisage, you know, kind of uh, creates uh, that, that, uh, uh, that sense of like, you know, and you mentioned, you know, the vision is important, but I think to kind of uh, you know use that that uh, way of you know kind of uh, tra- translating that to 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 the hearing, you know the touch and so forth. I mean that's the fascination about it because the ability to kind of uh, you know s- look at something that you you see, but but also deploy it to the different senses, you know brings about that that enriching of the whole experience, if you like. So, you know, I would say that, yes, but, you know, at the same time, be able to kind of allow uh, the vision to kind of uh, transform into the whole kind of, uh, you know, uh, engaging of, of uh, different uh, learning sort of uh, responses, if you like. So I think this is really crucial uh, if you want really, you know, uh, look at it. So, yes, indeed, you know, I, I think it's, it's about engaging every aspect of the, you know, the, the learning kind of responses and, and, and so forth. Definitely. That's, um, it's, it's kind of interesting to think about. And I think it's kind of hard for, you know, I, then I think of kind of a generational thing because, you know, we're teaching and we, t- we were learning in a different way. <laughs> yes. but now we have to come up with kind of uh, how to meet students that are completely in a different technology age than we were when we were going through school. So I think it's, it's a challenge, you know, for us, uh, for professors like us to go and um, in, some, in some areas, medicine I'm in biomedical engineering are more obvious and some areas are a little bit tougher to think about, you know, the traditional mm-hmm. methodology. So let's talk a little bit about one of my favorite subjects, <laughs> excuse me, um, jobs mm-hmm. in the future. So if I've been in workforce training my whole career, um, bringing up, you know, film talent and music talent and yes. something wow. that we have a lot of clients all over the world that, really anything, even if you're going for, you know, graduate level, you're usually preparing for some type of job, even if it's teaching, you know, and so let's just talk about the jobs of the future where, you know, usually we are educating our students, um, you know, very differently than in the past. And now we're looking at future jobs. So I'm just wanted to know, like, how, um, you know, how we adapt our education to best prepare students for the future jobs. And I can tell you, like myself, my own job, customer success was not a term brought up when I was in school, right, in engineering school, that wasn't a job. Um, Mm. Even IT specialist wasn't really a job yet. So 
we're really trying to prepare students for jobs and we may not know about yet, or they're maybe just starting to learn. I know some of the new ones are like AWS management, um, cybersecurity, and all of all of it. We don't really know what the future, some, a lot of the future ones will be. So um, I don't know, do you have any comments on, on preparation for future jobs? You know, and, and this is quite interesting because, uh, you know, uh, you know, students, when they come to university, often they are, you know, they are excited about what's there. They, they want to be engaged and this is the process they go through. But often they don't see ahead of, uh, you know, what they really need, uh, you know, in, in the in the, the workforce uh, when they, they, they come out from it. And, 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 and so, you know, often this is, this is where the universities try to, you know, try to kind of open up their, their minds about the things that they can uh, expect. But it's also important to kind of for, for, for students to, you know, have this kind of informed kind of choice in terms of uh, understanding, you know, the things that they, they want to learn to as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you know it's, it's typical for us to kind of sit down and, you know, students allow students to get, have, a, you know, an evaluation of uh, stuff. This is what we need and, and relevant to, to what we want to, to know so that we can be, uh, you know, we can have the appropriate qualification. But, you know, sometimes it's, 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 it's difficult uh, even for that, for students to assume that they know what they, they want uh, because they haven't yet gone to, they don't know the requirements in, in, in the employment, the skills that they need. So, yes, uh, but there's a level of which I think that we students, you need to start to engage earlier on to, to figure out that, you know, this is what they want to be. We all aspire to be, you know, something that we, we dream to be. But, you know, to kind of know what it takes to be somebody that you want to be, uh, it, it takes a, a bit of a, if, if you are a student really aspire to be, you know, to be a great sort of, you know, a scientist or research or a doctor or, or a teacher or, or whatever you want to be, then, you know, you, you, what is it that, it, that, that the, you know, the student need to kind of start to think ahead in terms of, you know, I need this, I need that and so forth. Uh, it's a challenge though, but, you know, having said that, I, I, I know that, you know, that is probably the, you know, the gap that, you know, needs to be, to be in which the students need to be engaged, uh, but needing who do who do they need to come in to right. just give that advice and counseling uh, and say you would need this and, and so forth and, and 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 so the students start to look at okay uh, I need to take this course <laughs> I need to 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 kind of is it flexible enough in this program to for me to to kind of do different kinds of uh, uh, you know integrate the number of courses so I guess you know it, it's it's something that's uh, it requires a lot of uh, thinking, you know, about it. But at the same time, uh, Arena, you know, I mean, uh, it's 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 quite interesting to think about it because uh, the the uh, the environment changing as well. Yeah. You know, the industry is changing in terms of the skills mm -hmm. uh, that's needed and so forth. So, yeah, I, I think it's 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 quite a interesting, you know, a way I, of thinking. Absolutely, I mean, I'm just going back to think about. The way I learned um, to be an engineer, my and my first jobs, and how that would happen now. So, it, it so I was designing cardiovascular products, but I so I learned how to do some things in school, right? But I didn't learn really all about the. I learned about critical thinking, but I don't think really the collaboration in a corporate environment. So I got there, yes. and I think the biggest surprise to me was maybe twenty percent of my time was designing, maybe, and then there was there was times like xeroxing and typing presenting, yes, yes. Uh, bringing, getting teams together, regulatory affairs, training people, yes. uh, even even learning languages yes. to train in other countries. And and when I think about all of those things that I had to learn, the other 80% of my job and how that would be different now, because I had to fly everywhere. I could yes. be speaking people. I, we were manufacturing in Puerto Rico. So I was having to learn uh, medical Spanish. And yes, so yes, yeah. and technical Spanish. Um, and so I could have been like now you could be in a spatial meeting. You could even teach assembly. You can bring assembly rules all in these collaborative like spatial meetings environments. You could be doing um, pre-training in, in 3D. I mean, it really changes a lot of 
the way that you do problem solve and, and collaborate. So, um, yes, I mean, do you agree, yes. like, you know, the things of yeah. that, yeah. No, yeah. No, I think this is really interesting as you, as we discuss this, because, uh, you know, I remember in different occasions that I had to, you know, having done research in the field of pharmacology, particularly looking for new drugs for, for you know, treating diseases and, and so forth. Uh, you know, my thought was that, you know, I, I, this is fine, this is good, but, you know, I need to interact with the communities <laughs> to really understand, you know, understand, you know, the challenges they faced uh, you know, in terms of uh, the, the, the health issues they were, you know, faced with. And so, you know, the, you know, going out and, and, and tracking the booths and, and diving to find something to, to bring to the lab and test and so forth. Uh, you know, and really helps you to kind of understand that you're doing it because uh, you want to kind of deliver, you kind of want to find something that will kind of uh, prevent diseases, find cures and, and, and so forth. But he, again, I, you know, I never thought that at one stage that I will end up as a, as a, a chief, you know, science advisor or policy. And, and, you know, that takes me to a point of, you know, where, how do I transition? I, I never had you know, that inclination or thought that, you know, I, I needed to kind of, uh, you know, learn some of this. But here again, you, you really had to dig deep and say, okay, how do I transform myself and, and be somebody else and, and so forth. Uh, and then here I am again, you know, in the different, and we are talking about this and never thought that, you know, this kind of, uh, you know, the, the technology, you know, really it's, it's moving from different kind of a, uh, stages of learning if you like mm -hmm. and and i think this is where you know to immerse in in a sense where uh you're going to morph into something you know every now and then uh i think this is what you know this is what technology this is what the environment should be in, in trying to get you know students to learn that you know you're going to be changing with time uh, it, and yeah and, and so forth i think about uh what I call transfer, transferable skill sets. So everyone yes. probably knows what those are. So even though you were trained to do something in school, like why, and I went back and think, why did, why was I chosen to train doctors to use our products? Yes, yes. All the other engineers had more experience than me because one of my transferable skills is communication. And oh, so wow. yes, for yes. an engineer, it might be unusual, right? So, yes. um, so as a young engineer, I was already running around the world training doctors. And so, but so then I realized that was part of my morphing, right? But becoming mature and learning what my transferable skills are and yes. you know, math, but commu with communication and visualization. So, but I think what's interesting about that is it never stops developing. So those are still your skills, but now with new technology, it grows those skills. And so like, in my area, like I spend time every single day learning something, which is yes, yes, like, yes. one of Absolutely. the best parts of this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, you feel, probably feel the same way on how you developed in school versus your career and your, you brought your skills to kind of another level along with your, you know, your administration roles and, and so forth and your advisement roles. Yes, no, that's quite true. I mean, you know, and I think that uh, it's a tremendous, you know, opportunity, you know, where I am now to kind of really use the experience to kind of uh, try to to, to really understand, you know, the learning requirements of uh, students and preparing them for the future and so forth. So, you know, and I think that uh, it, it's challenging as it, as it is, but it it's, uh, inspires, you know, me to kind of, uh, you know, imagine, you know, that I think that, uh, you know, you really have a lot of expectations about what is it that you want to see students doing uh, so that they can learn, they, they can be actually quite, useful in society uh, and, and so forth and better equipped uh, to, to get out into to the communities if you like uh, and to wherever they, the space that they can engage in so uh, I think it, it, it's quite a, it's quite a, you know important to, to, to be in this situation that we are now in to maximize <laughs> maximize technology. Uh, and, and, and then and, and, and use, you know, the opportunity to try to, 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 to uh, you know, to equip 
uh, students in different ways and, and so forth so that they can they can make decisions uh, you know when they, they leave the institution uh, and so that they can be more productive in in, in life sure and in, in the communities definitely and uh, and talking about this change there's been I mean you've been in here for a long time I've been doing design my entire career from to be on the earliest Mac computers to 3D to now yes. to lots of rooms with all of the cameras and the glasses. And now yeah. I'm using my phone yes. <laughs> scan and, and, and have these amazing um, one-to-one AR experiences. So talking about that, um, for, for one thing, I love this because it really brings uh, AR and which is my favorite modality to everybody. Well, uh, yes. Most people in the world have phone and that's a huge thing right there and, and and plus the accessibility where you can move around with your fingers or, or walk around models. But I just wanted to ask like, because you've been around in a long time too, just about maybe some of the uh, challenges over the last decade or so with this technology and, and maybe, um, you know, some of your key challenges. And then we'll talk about like the kind of the new modalities with that we bring to uh, students today. So uh, yeah. You have, yeah. Yes, yes, thank you. I, I, I think that it's, uh, you know, where I am now, I mean, yes, I've had the exposure, you know, outside and, and coming in, in Papua New Guinea. Now, we, we're still trying to leapfrog uh, in many ways in terms of, uh, you know, uh, technology in particular, uh, research and, and, and the focus in which how we can actually use that to these uh, uh, platforms to try to, you know, uh, you know, grow our country and, and really equip our university. So, so uh, you know, the transition is still there for, for, for us in here. Uh, and as I said, you know, uh, you know, you, you take, a, you, you kind of, you know, go back and start, you know, from where people have started from. Mm-hmm. So we find ourselves, you know, where, okay, I think, you know, we're going to have to jump some steps, uh, but as long as uh, we do not uh, miss uh, critical, uh, you know, that learning that we need to, but we have to be there uh, with the rest of the world, so to speak. So right. really, you know, in many ways, uh, I find myself, you know, uh, you know, kind of uh, seeing and going through a transition uh, in terms of uh, you're always moving a pace you know, and, and, and I say this in a sense that, uh, you know, Papua New Guinea has just become, a, you know, sort of gone through in a rapid, short, you know, time to where we are now, where, you know, many countries, the U.S. has got, you know, 200 years of growth and so forth. And we've taken us only like, what, 50 years or 40 years, so to speak. So, you know, in a sense, you know, this is a challenge that we have in, in a country uh, you know, a country like, like you know, Papua New Guinea, uh, and and so. But the beauty about it is that the the engagement and collaboration with with other you know other institution, other countries, really allow us to kind of you know uh, grow as well uh, and so forth. So yeah, it, it's a uh, you know I can't really pinpoint that you know that we we are you know at par in terms of you know technology, but you know. I, I think that th- there is an opportunity for us to be there, right? Uh, as as we deploy and we as we collaborate with others to kind of help us to to be engaged and and help us to be, you know, to you know, come and bridge that 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 gap, so to speak. Uh, and and so you know, it, it is unique in in many ways. Uh, the opportunities are there. Definitely, and I. I think, uh, you know, talking about that evolution and the way everybody's kind of coming together and kind of bringing this, like the internet, right? It happened, yes, the yes. internet. In fact, I couldn't believe when I first was pitching products along with other people pitching internet apps, this must have been, this must have been just before it broke. And I didn't understand the value of it. I'm like, why would anybody yes. invest in the internet or an app? <laughs> Like that seems silly, and I have a real product here. I have a medical product, but nope, the apps went out, and I learned a lesson. So this time yes. I'm paying attention with the evolution of AR and VR because I already learned it the hard way. So yeah. um, 
fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's that's interesting cool. you say that, uh, Reno. It's but interesting you say that because uh, my exposure, you know, to internet was, uh, you know, when I was working. That's a long time ago, almost thirty years ago, when I was working in Australia. There was no internet in in my country, but then it was pretty relatively new at that time, even in Australia in the mid nineties, uh, early nineties rather at that time. And so, you know, I started, you know, kind of thinking about, you know, what is this all about and yeah. so forth. So really it's it's just a, a major, you know, and now to move into a, a time now where, you know, the metaverse now, you know, it's, it, 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 you know, it, it's not becoming the, you know, the, the kind of a talk now, so to speak, you know. Absolutely. I mean, here we just had the Super Bowl and more than <laughs> half of the commercials had, augmented reality and metaverse content in them, even if they weren't yes. talking about it. It's just the way, a new way to communicate. It's become mainstream faster than the internet did it's so far. It's it's crazy. So in, uh, in 2018, which wasn't that long ago, um, about 80% of, st of education institutions tried AR, VR, but they didn't, they weren't successful past the pilot. And there was a, uh, you know, a couple of reasons there wasn't really an easy way to create the content without using like Blender or Unity or one yeah. of those uh, things. Um, the devices were expensive. If you think of the first Oculus, it was bigger, more expensive. There was, wasn't a lot of alternatives and a lack of content. So if you wanted to go find anatomy, physiology, yes. physics, chemistry, you know, there wasn't, it wasn't there. It was expensive. Um, in three, and since 2018, I guess it's been five years, 18, 19, 20, 20, yeah, five years. Mm -hmm almost five years, um, that's completely changed. <clears throat> and it's changing again this year with Apple and Google. Everybody is rushing to make the thinner glasses so that you don't need the projection goggles. Mm -hmm. and, and some of those things, uh, places like Sketchfab, CD Trader, Turbo Squid, having millions, not just a few, millions of content. And and a lot of those free that you can just yes. upload with no coding at all. And yes. that's what Eon's, and based on that, and, and we've now partnered with Sketchfab as well to bring things in there. So I just want to talk about that for a minute. Um, would you uh, just agree that one of the reasons that you haven't been able to use it at scale and or people in general haven't been able to use it at scale and in institutions is due to some of these, like the cost of the hardware, the lack of the content, yes. uh, may, even the difficulty of faculty to, you know, even use the technology? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're quite right. I think access to technology and just having the, the right kind of partnership, the right of kind of a technology, you know, sort of a uh, relationship uh, and, and, and then to, to have the right kind of application. It's really important to, to have. Uh, and, and, and that is really crucial. And, and at the same time, it's, it's, you're able to kind of, a, uh, it's sustainable. Uh, and you can see, in a sense, uh, what you can do, deploy it, but at the same time, how you can also uh, roll out you know, way into the to to the way you want to different programs, but into the future too as well. How do you see that growing, that growth uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know as you build on to to that, and as you 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 build that the, the training and 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 grow with that, and, and you can see the impact of that uh, to to you know in terms of uh, the training and and so forth. That's that. To me, that's really quite important. So, really, it, it's find the right kind of a relationship uh, that is really crucial for us. One that is relevant to to the, to what we're doing and to what we envision envision that in terms of where we want to where we want to be uh, in years to come. And you know, have that clarity, if you like, of the direction is really important. And I think that you know. I'm, I'm quite uh, excited about that, actually. Uh, that, uh, but it really depends on how you, you really kind of, uh, you know, get everyone to guide yourself, guide you, and everyone works with you, uh, not leave you, you know, kind of uh, walking on your own, so to speak, yes. <laughs> uh, and so forth. So it, it's like walking in the desert, you know, something like that. You know, I think this is what it is. The future is really about. It's the desert. And, and yeah. we need everyone to work work together and the technology to keep us, you know, the GPS, so to speak, and, and technology really guide us uh, as you, we move forward. So I, I think this is really what it's all about, uh, you know. 
That's a really important observation. I think you're right. It is like walking in the desert and we are hopefully going in the same direction and working uh, uh, and take uh, uh, moments, uh, right? I mean, this the idea of the data, the speed, the graphics, the concepts, yes. the pedagogy, um, yes. the lower and upper um, education, all of it. It's a lot. <laughs> It changes. Oh, it's a lot, and, okay. and I, you know, it, it's a lot. And, you know, I, I think the, the, the ability to bring, you know, uh, you know, your, you know, the, 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 the learning uh, and, and the environment to, to where you can actually uh, work through and allow that to take you to places, you know, allow that to take you to places through the 3D learning, and it's not just confined to a study kind of a way in which you are just playing in one spot but that emerging you know, that you know that learning really is in a sense is it's it's a journey that moves you forward moves you forward in your in a way that you know that you know uh you just built on and and you're just moving to places mm -hmm. in in the way that you see that learning taking taking you to to way you want to do or what you want to do how you want to impact a uh, job that you want to, to be doing and, and so forth. So I think that's that's really quite uh, challenging. And I, 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 I want to capture that in many respects uh, and so forth. Mm. Definitely. I, I agree with so much on that. And another another topic I wanted to hit on, um, the last, it's, it's interesting that this is taking place during a global pandemic, the growth of mm -hmm. AR and VR and XR and the metaverse. And I yes. think uh, one of the things driving it, I think it'll come out in the future, but I think people realize PowerPoint and Zoom are starting to become like for a lot of students, you know, they don't listen to us after the first six minutes or so. So a lot yeah, of yeah, students, yeah. like they're all on there, they check in and then all of a sudden, yes. I don't know where they are. They're there, but they're not there as you know. So, um, yes. and it's even worse in, you know, can you, you know, kindergartners, like my colleagues now, you know, they'll be working, but the kids have been at home <laughs> trying to do this as well. And it's been uh, very challenging. So um, I'm wondering if you think it's, you know, that, that I know we had to do this, but as far as online education, I, there's got to be like a lack of the hands-on, hands-on activities and yes. you're not really engaged in it, you know, you're not, so it's easy to tune out. So uh, what I, I was just going to see if you had a comment about that. You know, I mean, as long as the, you know, the situation allows for, for interactive kind of, you know, uh, where, you know, the the ability to kind of uh, allow uh, the learning to, for you to be engaged with others is, is really, and allow you to kind of have the experience that is, that is as much as it's, 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 it's kind of a simulation, if so to speak, but uh, allow you to kind of, to have those connections. Yeah. And, and, and to have those connecting that 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 come in a sense real to as well, that you know that this is what it is. So so and and so the interface between reality, uh, you know, uh, becomes uh, it becomes more like a, you know, less kind of a you know o obvious uh, in terms of you know the transition really. Is is what we need to deal with, so the transition becomes more more efficient and more easy to move into to the real thing. So really, that the mission, you know, so that the barriers becomes more transparent. If yeah. I can say that. more transparent, so that so that you are not merged into something that doesn't take you away, doesn't take you to to the real world, so to speak. So I, I think that, you know, otherwise we'll be living in a Hollywood kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> you and, know, but, you yeah. Know. One, one of the things I hear a lot, in fact, um, like what about when we don't need to be learning online? But see, here's the difference. When you're doing like an online meeting, you're doing an online meeting. When you're doing AR, XR, it's not an online meeting. Only It's a learning modality, teaching modality. Yes, so, so for me, like, I'm like, well, this has nothing to do with like, if you're online or not online, when I'm in class, I have everybody do the same thing, right? They're yes. going to make content, they're going to so. artificial intelligence, they're going to, you know, create knowledge, do their research, 
um, do it in a 3D immersive environment. So I think it's very different. And I think people get confused on technology that way or the way they describe it. It's like, mm. it's not like just because uh, some you're using a computer or a phone that it's an online experience. And yes, maybe yes, yes. I'm a digital media professor, like I get the difference, but I know a lot of people are like, well, what happens when we go back to school? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's even better because as a professor, like for me, you know, I build relationships with my students and it's easier to help them to grow. That's my job. And mm -hmm. it's much harder to perceive, you know, those relationships on online for me. But the AR <laughs> VR is, is still a modality that I teach in, whether it's online. And uh, for me, it's always a better experience in person. I just enjoy, you know, I've spent my whole career teaching in person. So anyways. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's really important to to maintain that, uh, in, you know, face to face while you are interacting with, you know, students, uh, you know, playing their thing and, and, and learning and, and so forth. Uh, and, 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 and that's really it's fun. You know, I was talking to to one of our faculty a few weeks ago as we tried to to deploy, an, you know, this uh, Eon application. And I, I said he is pretty much into into the environment and into the forest and, and so forth. And, and, and I said, you know, what if you bring that environment to the, you know, to the, through the Eon platform and, and, and then you walk through the forest, you know, you know, allow yourself and students to walk into the forest and to, to explore, uh, you know, the forest in a way that, you know, you, you've never experienced that before in the virtual, uh, you know, and, and, and that excites me actually. You can walk through the mountain range and walk and dive into the sea and, and, and then walk with your students through that. Bring, bring that, whatever that you've been working on that research and bring it to the classroom. You know, transform it into a way that, that, that you're walking and finding new species, exactly. if you like, in different, different altitudes. If you like, to the mountain, to the, to the mangroves and to the rivers and all that. Bring it on, you know. <laughs> so, you, so you know that is my challenge to to him. Bring that, you know, that the forest to the classroom, uh, to, to to the practice room and so forth. So yeah, I think it's it's quite exciting. I love that. Let me ask you just a couple more questions. Um, at, at your institution, um, you know, uh, do you have do you want to comment at all about implementing this? At, you know, in a large institution and like. Any challenges, um, any wins, any you know program specific things that have happened uh, while you've been doing this implementation? Yeah, yeah, we, you know, uh, thank you. We we are the this is the very early stage actually. Uh, you know, we just had the you know initial training session just uh, yesterday actually. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> yesterday, actually, actually, and, and while we're talking about it, you know, I'm excited about it, you know, and I want to kind of really you know kind of move move the, the kind of, uh, you know, the, the learning uh, that we are so that we can start to kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of roll out into our program. So uh, we've started the learning session yesterday and we've just engaged uh, 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 one of our schools, the School of uh, Health Sciences, really, you know, focusing on the, our nursing and uh, midwifery program mm -hmm. uh, and, and so forth. Uh, so that's exciting. So we want to just uh, make sure that we're able to do that and then just, uh, you know, gradually move in the next uh, phase of uh, rolling out into the different schools, particularly in the, the School of Science, uh, uh, in the in different programs and, and then the business and, and others as well. So, yes, uh, it's still early for us, but uh, uh, and, and the learning and, and, and our faculties are quite excited, really excited about it. You know, they... This way to kind of uh, integrate the, <laughs> the platform with the, the teaching that they're learning. Uh, so uh, I just, uh, you know, have to just keep motivating the, everyone uh, to kind of, uh, you know, get into the learning sessions and, and so forth. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, we, you know, I think that if we have a discussion, meet again in, in, a, in a month's time, two months time, I'll tell you something different. Absolutely. It reminds me of the trouble I had um, when I was in engineering school. We learned nothing about doses. But then my company said, oh, well, you have to know with what medicine and what dose uh, your 
uh, your medical device changes. So I had to learn EKGs and doses in nursing school. Yes, yes, yes. I almost thought it was terrible for me. And <laughs> it was so easy for them. But I think about like in engineering school, you could easily have like videos of EKGs and dosage and hospital yes. and patients and the whole situation and learn some of that before it's too late, before you find out you're using that work. But there's just so many things that come to mind. Um, so do you have any, you just started, but did you have any favorite things that you saw yet in like AR? You know, you know at this stage, you know, I, I think it's, uh, you know, really the fact that through the, the, the platform, you're able to kind of, uh, uh, you know, to have access to content, you know, the content and materials that are there and, and bring it on to kind of uh, help you to develop your learning materials and so forth. So it really, it, it is the, you know, that kind of, a, you know, the, 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 the way in which allows you to kind of interact with others, uh, that allow you to kind of uh, know that there are, you know, materials there, there are sources out there. And, and it's not as, as difficult as you would have thought in the past. It's this, you know, as you know, the library is there, and before you, you kind of wonder where do I go, uh, and you know, I can go through there. I'm not too sure whether I'm going to the right place to get the right kind of information, and you spend too much time there, uh, yeah. you know, going through. So this is this is the beauty of it. It sort of, uh, you know, guides you efficiently to where you you what you're going, what you're looking for, and and and. Uh, and, and it's it's less time consuming, uh, and so forth. So, and I think this this, this is the power of you know, I think what the, the platform I I believe it, it has, and 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 of course uh, you're able to interact with other people too as well, you're able to see you know what people are doing, and and and, and support each other, and and the feedback uh, expected as well. You know, I I think it just it, it simply we just accelerate the learning to a different level. Uh, and I hope so that, you know, that we really, you know, in a sense, uh, you know, accelerating different levels of what we're doing now. Uh, above all, give this, you know, everyone of us, the faculty and the students, uh, a real sense of uh, educational experience that, uh, that otherwise we've never had before. Uh, so we're really quite excited about, uh, you know, how, what we try to really explore now. Absolutely. It reminded me of some of my favorite things um, with uh, there's two things that made have made a difference for me in technology um, with in this last three years, APIs and yes. yeah. uh, it just, you know, communicating between applications and yes. uh, what I would call wrappers, but file types, because these files consist of maybe 30, 40 different little things, layers and lighting and all that yes, yes. much different than a PDF or even a 2D yes. file. And um, I first learned this when I do film because there's, you know, you might have thousands of clips, but you got to come up with a movie file at the end of the day. Yes, yeah, right. and so I love how there's this format, GLB and GLTB, that people have come to the consensus that it can just go in like a zip file and you don't have yes. to worry or know anything about all of that stuff unless you're a designer. But for us teachers, we just drag it in there just like yes. a file and it just brings it in. So those two things, and the API really lets us access those libraries, which are going to be yes. inside of Eon um, in just a few weeks here. Absolutely. Sketchfab. So Absolutely. really, yeah, those two things, I think, for me, and technology have made a huge difference in the way that um, we interact with these technologies now that make it usable. And it's really brand new, these integrations. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's where what you said really is important, where the world's coming together. <clears throat> this is one of those, that's something that the world came together. They came to a standard where you can yes. share the APIs and the, and the file wrappers together to let yes, everyone yes. talk to each other. So I think it's tremendous. Uh, it's, a, it's a big step in the right direction and it's, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's becoming pretty easy uh, to use. So mm -hmm. any, any last comments before we wrap it up? No, it, it's, it's exciting really to be in this, uh, you know, this uh, stage in terms of, uh, you know, where we are now trying to, you know, learn and integrate this uh, platform in our learning. Uh, and we're quite excited about it, actually. Uh, we're looking forward to, to really uh, roll out uh, as efficiently as we can. And, and we are so glad that, that uh, you know, the uh, EON, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, resource people, experts, uh, uh, you know, there to guide us and help us. And, and we hope to also to network with similar learning centers too as well. That's what we are really hoping. So to learn what the experience they've gone through and to help us to ensure that uh, we're able to maximize uh, our growth uh, and, and, and our, you know, capacity to really, uh, you know, set uh, our, our, you know, our center uh, in a way that will help us to really, uh, uh, you know, aggressively, uh, you know, build uh, this platform into our programs. Fantastic. I, that's, that's a really great, uh, great vision. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited that we're here to work together to do that. And confident that we'll, we will be very successful together. We both have that drive and vision. So yes. super excited. So with that, uh, Professor Mata Naho, again, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that. That's Lohi. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, easy. Lohi. And here's, uh, and I, I just want to thank you for your time, your vision, and it was really fun. So, um, and, yeah. and I hope uh, a lot of people can, gain some insight from our conversation today and that everybody enjoyed this webinar with us together. So yes. uh, wrapping it up, uh, Dr. Rena Walzinger from Eon Reality, thanking you very much. Uh, thank you, Papua New Guinea. We're so excited to be working with you. And thank you, Rena. Thank, okay. you. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Bye. 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 Bye.